Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. and this is AP Chemistry. We're going through the 2018 AP Chemistry exam, and this will finish it out. This is the free response problems number six and number seven of the 2018 AP Chem exam. You can see number six starts off with an electrochemistry problem. We have a chromium electrode in a chromium solution, probably chromium nitrate or something like that. We have a silver electrode in a silver nitrate solution. You can see why are we using nitrate with the chromium and the silver in terms of the solutions. It's so that we don't have any precipitates happen. Now they say in A, they say the student measures the voltage and it discovers that voltage is equal to zero. Okay, well why is it equal to zero is there's no salt bridge. I need a salt bridge right here and what should we make the salt bridge out of is sodium ions and nitrate ions, right? Sodium nitrate so that nothing precipitates with it. So that the salt bridge allows, what does the salt bridge do? There is no salt bridge. And what does a salt bridge do? They want us to explain its importance. The salt bridge allows for migration of ions. It allows for ions to flow. And therefore, what does it do? It keeps or maintains a charge balance. A charge balance in my electrochemistry electrochemical cell in my voltaic cell. Um, so that is number 6a. That's worth one point, one point for the saying the salt bridge and an explanation. Don't forget it says and explain. We need the explanation in order to get that first point. Okay. Then we go to B. B is saying we have the silver Ag plus is equal to 0 0.80. They say um, the student adds the missing component. We know the overall electrochemical volta uh, voltage is 1.54. It's positive. If the E is positive, that means the delta G is negative. That means it is going to be favorable. And so the, uh, the K is going to be greater than 1. Okay, And as the cell operates, the Ag plus ions are reduced. Rem remember uh, number 1 gaining electrons is called reduction and so we have Ag plus gaining an electron gives me Ag solid that's positive 0.80 volts which means the other one we had to flip okay and so when we flip it the losing electrons is oxidation the little line goes GER which means the chromium solid is going to become chromium plus 3 plus 3 electrons and when I add up these voltages, these voltages are going to be positive 1.54 volts. And so what do we know that this missing component has to be? It's got to be point, um, 0.74, 0 0.74, which means in my half reaction, because this was the one I flipped, remember the oxidation one is the one we always flip, this is going to be negative 0.74 volts. So the answer for number one is negative 0.74 volts, and that is going to be worth one point. So we know the silver was reduced, the chromium was oxidized. If we come back here, we know that the silver is being uh, reduced. The silver is the gain electron is reduction, which means the Leo side is over here, which means the anox, the anode, is over here. The red cat, the cathode, is over here. This guy is gaining electrons, so electrons are coming this way. Electrons are coming across, which means this one is becoming more and more and more and more solid, isn't it? Okay, so we are plating this with more and more and more and more and more silver solid, which means the chromium, the oxidation, is getting just obliterated, dissolved, and the chromium is going up in concentration. The chromium is going, there's more chromium plus 3, more chromium plus 3, more chromium plus 3, which means what's going to happen to the salt bridge is the nitrate, the NO3 minus, is going to go this way to compensate for that positive. The sodium ions are going to come this way to compensate for that as well to keep the charge balance. 
that's not what they asked for, all right? <laughs> I was just giving you some extra, extra, extra help with electrochem. Number two, we want to know the balance reaction. Of course, what are my electrons going to be when I balance these electrons is three, which means I need three, three, and three. Remember, that does not do anything to the voltage because the voltage is not volts per meter, which means I have three AG pluses plus a chromium solid gives me chromium plus three plus three AG solids, and that is worth one more point right there. Let's go on to the last one, on to uh, uh, number three. Number three, they want to know what the delta G is. Remember delta G, we have that equation on our equation sheet, negative N, F, E. Negative N is the number of electrons we transfer. We tr transfer three moles of electrons. What is the F? Is Faraday's constant, that's 90, a six, four, eight, five coulombs for every mole of electrons. And what do we know about the voltage, the E? It's positive 1.54 volts. They gave it to us, and that delta G ends up becoming a very large value, negative 4.46 times 10 to the fifth. And that delta G is in joules per mole. That was worth one point. Four point problem, A is worth one point, B1 is worth one point, B2 is worth one point, B3 is worth the last point. That's an electrochem problem. Now we're gonna be on to number seven. Uh, number seven brings us to an atomic principles problem. Okay, And we have a PES data, photoelectron spectroscopy, and remember what do we do as soon as we get a photoelectron spectroscopy is we label the electron configuration. You can see here, um, we start with the highest energy. The highest energy is going to be the 1s2. Why? Because those electrons are closest to the nucleus, which means it takes the most energy. They are the most attracted to the nucleus. It takes the most energy to remove those. So 1s2, you can see there's two electrons. That's the height. We have 2s2. That's the height. And we have 2p3 because that's going to be the height, which means they want to know the identification of the element. The element is nitrogen. Okay, so we get nitrogen that was worth one point. Remember, if they are going to any types of qualitative questions there, uh, go to your number of protons, your number of protons, that's your nuclear charge. Take a look at the attraction with the electrons on that. So let's go to the second part of the problem. We have 7b. 7b says uh, we know the radioactive element decays within a half-life of 10 minutes and they want to know what is the rate constant and remember anything that's going naturally is going to be a first order decomposition and so we have a kinetics type problem and what do we know we know that the half-life is equal to 0.693 over k the half-life is 10 minutes we have 0.693 over k, which means k is going to be 0.693 over 10, or 0 0.0693, and of course that's minutes to the negative 1 because the minutes is on your denominator and it is first order. Uh, this was worth 1 point, for the, 1 point for the value, the correct num numerical answer, one point for the correct units of minutes to the negative one. Last but not least, they said if 64 atoms of radioactive isotope are originally present, what is the expected time that will pass until only one isotope remains? Remember, I like to do it this way. We get 64, that becomes 32, and that will take 10 minutes to get from 64 to 32. Then we're gonna go down to 16, that's 10 more minutes. Then we get eight, that's three half-lives, 10 minutes. Down to four, that's 10 minutes. Down to two, that's 10 minutes. Down to one, that's 10 minutes. So you can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 total minutes to get down to just one atom, and that is worth one point. So number seven, worth four points, one point for nitrogen, one point for the number, one point for the units, one point for 60 minutes. That was problems number six and seven. That's the 2018 AP Chem, exa AP Chem exam. Make sure you have a good weekend and make sure you keep going after and studying AP Chem. Thanks, guys.